Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Mech Lab, where we try to be a better mech commander every day. So, today I wanted to go over how to make alterations to a mech in Mech HQ. So here we have my Diadem Liberation campaign, uh, and I have a Dervish 6MD. And I've brought it over here from my hangar. Now, what I basically did was I hit customize and then I hit customize in mech lab. It then brings the unit over here to customize in mech lab. And uh, so we have the base unit here. You can see it has single heat sinks and an XL engine, uh, seven and a half tons of standard armor, 585 movement profile. You know, uh, we'll, we'll look at this sort of overview here. It's a little easier to see everything. Medium laser and an SRM two in each arm. Two tons of SRM ammo in each arm as well, or one ton of SRM ammo in each arm, total of two tons. Three tons of LRM-15 in the right torso with case. No case on the left torso, so if that left arm blows, this thing is gone. Now, I currently have smoke ammo in there to make ammo explosions a little bit less insane, because uh, smoke ammo does, I think, half damage. It's still probably going to blow the mech up, though. 50 damage. Uh, it might not. It's going to depend on how much is left on the on the left torso, I think. But anyways, it's it's a really bad design overall. Ten armor on those arms with ammo in them. I mean, that's terrible. So, I mean, obviously, easy first thing to do. Remove those SRMs. Remove the SRM ammo. As you can see, uh, it has the LRM-15s, one in each torso. It's got the XL engine slots here. It's got a heat sink in the center torso, jump jets in the legs in the center torso as well. So this is great crit padding. The uh, jump jets and the heat sink are basically giving extra locations that can be hit other than the critical systems like the hip, the foot, uh, the gyro, upper and lower leg. But the arms do not have hands, which makes them significantly worse at punching. Not that that's really a big deal, since it's an LRM boat, right? It's mainly, its job is to stand in the back and shoot things. Now, the mech does have single heat sinks, like I said, which is kind of a big issue. You don't really have a lot of heat budget to play with when you're dealing with single heat sinks. So, I'm not exactly sure what we want to do with this mech. I alluded earlier in another video that I have a clan LRM-10. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. I'll we'll actually change this to experimental level tech. What we're going to do is change this to mixed inner sphere. Inner sphere is the tech base, but you can take clan tech now. Now I'm going to go to maximized armor. And as I've iterated before again, that one half ton on a 55 tonner, you just want to drop it down. It's only one point of overall armor loss. I was playing with the build a bit before I started recording, and I think around 10 tons of armor should probably be sufficient. We can get 20 on the arms, 18 or sorry, 18 on the arms, 20 on the legs, and like 20 on each torso. I want five on the back in every location just in case. I mean, this is a pretty good armor spread right here. So I'm pretty happy with that. We have 51 and a half tons out of 55. So that gives us a good amount of room to play with. Now I'm going to turn this mech into a dedicated LRM boat by slotting another LRM-10 clan in there. Because we do have a mech warrior with oblique attackers. So I, I want at least one mech in my force that has a lot of LRMs to make use of that. Now we're at 54 tons, and then we can just grab one ton of LRM-10 ammo. There we are. One ton of LRM-10 ammo added. And we're going to stick this all into that torso right there. Now let's have a look at our heat at long range here. We have 554, five, that's a total of 14, and we only have 12 heat sinks. This isn't actually that big of a deal. What I think we'll probably do 
is we will remove one ton of LRM ammo and we'll add an additional heat sink. That gives us 13 sinking, which means that every few turns, we're just going to have to turn off one of these LRMs. And it'll probably be the 15 because it produces a little bit more heat. So basically every turn we're gonna gain between one and three heat if we're walking. Hmm. But we've got these five jump jets and maybe that's a little bit too many. If we drop those, then we can get 14 heat sinks. Now, as long as we're standing still, we can fire every single turn, but we only have eight turns of firing. We don't quite need all of that LRM-15 ammo, I don't think, personally. And we can take LRM-5s. LRM-5s are more efficient on weight, a little bit less efficient on heat. So instead of the LRM-15s, we can just grab a couple of LRM-5s and one ton of LRM-5 ammo. That gives us 12 rounds of firing since it's 24 shots. So now we have the same amount of shots for the LRM-10 and the LRM-5s. And we have a little bit of extra tonnage left over now. We're down five missile tubes though. Let's have a look at our heat. We have eight plus five is 13. So we can afford one additional LRM-5 and one additional heat sink. This gives us 15 heat sinking and four, six, eight, 10, 15 heat generated. But instead of having just two shots, we now have one, two, three, four, five shots. So we've effectively added 10 LRM tubes, but vastly increased the number of shots that we make, meaning that if we're rolling, say, eights or nines to hit, we have a much greater chance of at least connecting with something. Let's have a quick look at our unit, an overview. If we move at all, we gain heat when we fire all of our weapons, but it's very easy to just turn off one of our LRM-5s. That's not a problem at all. If we look at our critical slots, we can see that we now have an empty slot in the leg and the center torso. Why don't we throw a heat sink in each of those empty slots? We then put the LRM ammo in the case protected torso. And I put a heat sink here, but what I might do is actually just put the heat sink on the other side. A mech that has an XL engine really doesn't care which side torso it loses. It's automatically going to knock the mech out regardless. Normally, I would recommend a head-mounted LRM-5. Because we have the XL engine, we want to put as much crit padding into the side torsos as humanly possible. Another option would be to move this heatsink from the torso into the side torso. 13,620 minutes is required to perform this refit. Each mech tech gets 480 minutes per day of work. We'll pull up our calculator and divide 13,000 620 by 480 minutes. This gives us the length of time that it will take to refit the mech, 28 days. Due to the fact that there is an extra 0.375 days on the end there, it will take us a full 29 days to refit this mech. The build looks significantly better now. You can see we have a dedicated purpose. We still have some mobility, able to jump through forests, as well as over mountains, to get into a good sniping position. We have many more weapons, meaning that we have a much better chance of landing at least one hit, even if we have only 12s. We have somewhat inadequate ammo for the LRM-15, with only eight rounds of fire, versus the 12 for our, for our LRM-10. The LRM-5 has a similar amount of ammo, eight rounds of shooting as well. Most of the matches that I fight in Mega Mech don't go for longer than eight rounds anyways. So I don't think that this is a particularly big problem. 
Let's look at another potential build. We simply go in here and remove all of the things that we've put in. We'll keep the LRM Clan 10. It is a very good weapon compared to all of the other weapons that we have. Instead of LRM 5s, we might consider MML 3s. The unfortunate thing about MML 3s is that even though we can bring more of them, 4 versus the 3 of the LRM 5s, we cannot use the heat scale properly. We also have no ability to bring both SRM and LRM ammo with our one remaining ton. This build isn't going to fly. Instead of making it a dedicated indirect fire support mech, we could just make it a brawler by adding an LBX-10. This weapon consumes a lot of tonnage, but doesn't produce very much heat. This would allow us to drop several heat sinks. We now have the baseline 10 heat sinks every mech requires. And we only produce 11 heat when we fire all of our weapons. We have one ton remaining, but we haven't taken our ammo yet. If we wanted to take an LBX, we would have to remove the LRM-15. I don't think that that's worth it. Mostly due to the refit time it's going to be required in removing this. It would add another several hundred minutes to our refit. Again, I don't think it's worth it. After some consideration, I've decided to go back to the base build with some minor alterations as to where I've put the critical components. One last look at our final build here. One final look at our build here. This mech will be ready to hit the field in about a month. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you can leave a like and a comment down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, please share the content around if you know anyone who might be interested. This has been another episode of the Mech Lab. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.